Right, Toyota champs, and we're having a look at some of Lenovo Legion laptops that could change the industry, and they're not the only one as who's done something that these laptops have done. But make no doubt, this is the start of a change in the gaming industry, and I'll talk about what I'm talking about in a sec. But let's just go quickly through them. I want to focus in on one of these laptops that could be my laptop. I thought it was going to be my laptop until I read the spec sheet. And then there's a couple of things missing sort of thing there. 16 inch gaming laptops, Wolf. So we've got Lenovo Legion 7, Legion 5 Pro, Legion Slim 7 and Legion 5. Now some of the key features on all of these is Lenovo Legion cold front. So supposed to be better cooling, etc. Better fans. We have 16 inch QHD 165Hz monitors that are supposed to be color accurate. We'll find out in the wash here. There you can see all the models here. They look nice, don't they? They're using some AI to, you know, tune things for games and content creation, etc. Of course, the latest RTX laptops and the latest Ryzen 5000H laptops. So there you can see the 16 inch Legion 7, you know, HDR 400 display, 16 inch QHD, 2560 by 1600, 16 by 10. And that's the thing, that's gonna change the industry now. Also supports G-Sync, it uses Corsair IQ RGB, so it's gonna look cool, Wi-Fi 6, vapor chamber, etc. But let's get into the specs of it. So 5.5 pounds, 2.5 kilos, that's fine. It's a 16 inch now, so that's cool. Up to 32 gigs RAM, 3,200 megahertz RAM. 32, it's not that much. Why is it only 32? Is it soldered in? Or is that a limitation with the Ryzen? I don't know. I don't even know how much PCI lanes these Ryzen's have. The last gen actually only had 8X to the graphics. Hopefully these have 16X to the graphics. Only looks like one M.2 there, that's fine. And if you have a look here, 300 watt power adapter so these things are going to suck power i mean usually you might have a you know a 240 watt or a 280 300 watts wow we're going up in the wattage there so you know that these things are going to be power hungry we'll have to find out if it's the gpu or the cpu that's more power hungry or both and we have a look at the displays awesome and this is where they're going to change the industry right 16 by 10 display which is why this could be my content creation slash gaming laptop. It's got the CPU one, it's got a GPU one, it's got 16 by 10, which I always bang on about. Now it's got G-Sync, 165 Hertz, 500 nits of brightness, Dolby Vision, it looks like a killer display. There's two ways I see it. 16 by 9 is the industry standard for gaming. Even ultra-wide monitors, some games don't even support it right now. And how long have, you know, ultra-wide's been out? I test XPS 15 16 by 10 MacBook Pro 16 by 10 Surface 3 by 2 and it's a nightmare trying to test games on them because either you have to stretch it or you have to crop it or it's just yeah it's really janky because they don't like that aspect ratio 3 by 2 16 by 10 games are not made for it so it's going to be a bit of a dodgy gaming experience but hopefully we're pushing everyone to 16 by 10 and it's a chicken and egg thing right the more 16 by 10 we have out the more they're going to support it but you know widescreens how long have they been out and there's still games that don't support ultra wide very well so it's sort of weird that a gaming laptop has 16 by 10 but hey i'm not going to complain just that feature made me interested in having this but there's a couple of issues that i don't know if i can get past it first of all they say target eight hours battery life now there's three things that stop me from using gaming laptops as my daily it's usually noise battery life display now i have used xps in the past with 16 by 9 but it had good battery life and it wasn't noisy now this will probably be noisy but i could probably live with that if it had good battery life but eight hours target, you know you're only going to get four, maybe five hours if that's their target of eight hours. I don't think there's no excuse in a 5.5 pound laptop other than the vapor chamber being heavy to not have like a 99 watt hour battery. It's not like an ultra thin and light, is it? So the battery life is like, oh, I don't know about it. And then here, no Thunderbolt. A lot of people are like, what do you need Thunderbolt? It does have HDMI 2.1, which I really love, but no Thunderbolt. And it's not for eGPU, right? The graphics in this laptop are going to be that powerful, like you won't need an eGPU. But I use everything Thunderbolt 3. I've got a Thunderbolt audio interface, got a Thunderbolt dock with my Ethernet and everything else connected to it. Thunderbolt 3 displays as well. AMD have got to sort this out. There's no reason they can't have Thunderbolt. So just sort it out. One of you, sort it out. Get some Thunderbolt on your laptops. Like. Anyway, apart from that, it looks amazing. The battery life and no Thunderbolt. It looks like an amazing laptop and maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe the battery life is good and 
maybe I could live with that Thunderbolt, which I'll just have to do so many workarounds if I don't have Thunderbolt. It's just, yeah, maybe a deal breaker there. But anyway, looks like an amazing laptop. They've had an amazing CES. So, yeah, catch you in the next one. Tally ho.